Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and welcome to this week's episode of The Knife Guy. So what are we talking about today? I've got the, the blades out. We're going to try, I'm going to try to remember because people always say, like sometimes you go through a whole Knife Guy episode and you just don't, you don't even get the knives out. All right, well, they're out. <laughs> <laughs> All of them, right off the bat. This is a topic I've wanted to talk about for a while. I don't know why it took so long to talk about it. Uh, depending on who you ask, right, you're going to get a lot of different opinions on the state of the knife community. Um, and there's a lot of like, you know, there's a lot of people who will say stuff like, oh, the, the knife community has grown incredibly toxic and it's in the worst state it's ever... I, I, I honestly, I think those are just miserable people. In my opinion, the knife world, the knife community however you, whatever you want to call it, this is the best state that it's ever been in. I think it's good that a lot of times you get, you hear that from people who have been here for a bit and they kind of have a gatekeeper mentality. They might not say it out loud, but they've been here for a bit. And like, as time progresses, like things just, they just like dislike things more and they like things less, right? Then they just, you've seen people go down this path, right? And so their, their view is like much more dismal and they just, yeah, right? Uh, it's like, ask somebody who's a metalhead, right? Like a metalhead from like the 80s or 90s. Ask them what they think about, you know, that corner of the world now in 2023, right? I mean, there's arguments to be made for why somebody might not like today's music versus the music that they grew up with, sure. But a lot of them are just kind of like, they've just grown to like hate everything without giving it a chance. And... I like to experience new things. I like to look at things glass half full. So while I'm not saying that I'm absolutely right and anybody else who gives their opinion on this topic is absolutely wrong, I'm just letting you know where I'm coming from. Um, the knife community currently is much more welcoming and open to people. Things are, um, are there's a good argument to be made that things are substantially, um, it's, it's uh, more there, there's there's better acquisition, right? There's there's better means of acquisition. Things are not like absolutely locked behind, you know, towering monolithic iron doors. Things can still be hard to get, but accessibility is generally better on average, right? Um, the word is out to more people. Uh, YouTube and other social media platforms have grown this community to an absolutely gargantuan population versus just a decade ago, let alone, you know, the multiple decades that, uh, you know, people have been collecting pocket knives in, in modern times, right? Right. You, you've talked about this before. So what's your point? Uh, something that comes with this, and this can be said about many different communities, but something that comes with this that I think is really cool is the amazing connection between certain groups of people that you would never expect there to be a connection with. For example, there are many people in this community uh, who are much older, right? Uh, some of you watching right now are in your 50s, 60s, perhaps even in your 70s, and you like pocket knives. Uh, you probably enjoyed, um, you know, certain types of pocket knives that you grew up with and then kind of watched the evolution of the knife world. You have your own, you know, general taste, but, you know, as you can imagine, anybody experiencing one thing over multiple decades, they watch an evolution take place. And while maybe the vast majority of these evolved products might not be for them, it's almost inevitable that they find something that they like. They find, a, you know, a continued purpose to uh, enjoy this hobby. Um, and so, uh, they have their own reasons, whether they're, you know, um, it's, it's almost an inevitability that they actually carry and use some of this stuff, but you know, anybody who's been interested in this stuff this long, you, you kind of naturally turn into a collector, at least some, at some capacity you do, right? So you got, you get some people like this, uh, who enjoy kind of using collecting. They, they enjoy that. And they, they're probably... I mean, uh, maybe that some of these people are coin collectors, firearm collectors, right? Or this, this kind of thing. Uh, I find that, um, and this isn't always the case, but oftentimes people who are older are also sort of like automotive enthusiasts. Maybe they're like motorcycles, right? There's a certain type of lifestyle that's generally associated with people who are knife enthusiasts who are older. It's not always true. It's not a perfect, you can't say like, oh, you know, 
it, it's not going to be like perfectly on the nose, but generally speaking, we see these types of people. Now, you probably wouldn't expect somebody who's, uh, you know, from a, an older generation to be, um, let's say, uh, somebody who likes playing modern video games, right? Let's let's flip the let's flip the coin here. <laughs> 2023, right? People who like video games. Maybe uh, you grew up uh, collecting Pokemon cards, right? Uh, not so much an outdoorsy person, but guess what? Also into pocket knives. For almost exactly the same reason. Uh, it's very rare that these two people, I mean, that their, their paths would cross in a way that would cause them to find common ground on something, right? Uh, and this might not seem like that. It's like, wow, amazing observation. Like, wow, you're going to make a whole episode about this? Yes, I'm, da- I'm going to. That is an incredible thing because it's, generally speaking, you're not going to have these two groups of people uh, like enjoying the same thing for almost exactly the same reason right? And this absolutely does occur. You also have people from various corners of the knife community, like let's say the bushcraft community. I mean, okay, let me take, for example, uh, the Dutch bushcraft boys, because we're going to get a lot of people saying, all right, you know, you you certainly, you have like some of these, some of these nerds who like collecting Pokemon cards and watching anime. anime." Okay. From both sides of the spectrum, the term nerd has lost all meaning. It doesn't mean anything anymore. It's just a way to describe somebody whose interests you don't understand, right? A lot of people would say anybody who collects knives or is interested in knives for any reason, they would call that person a nerd. No, wait, I'm from the bushcraft community. I'm, no, I'm from the cool side. No, no, don't call me. Like, yeah, it's, it, it, it depends on your perspective and where you're looking, right? So that that word is is meaningless, uh, I, I mean, like countless times in my life, I've been called a nerd and I've also been called a jock. It just depends on who's looking and what they're watching you do and what their perspective is, right? Oftentimes, the perspective is just useless, it's just nonsense. They don't even know what it is they're talking about in the first place. So you get people from the bushcraft community who assume all these other, you know, these filthy casuals who don't understand the, the meaning of what it means to carry a blade and use the blade as a me- right? Okay, we got the Dutch bushcraft boys who have arguably tested and used more knives in, you know, that type of environment than the average, like, bushcraft lord, right? Self-proclaimed, definitely not a nerd bushcraft lord, right? These guys have definitely, they have more knowledge than people who have, you know, sort of been in that territory. A lot of people have been in that territory for multiple decades. And these are younger guys. Uh, anybody who's aware of it, who catches the references, how many times do these guys reference Dragon Ball Z in those videos? You might not even realize it. You might, you might be that freaking ultra hardcore man. I never collected no Pokemon cards because I'm a serious bushcraft lord. I take things seriously. <laughs> Batani, right? That's what, that's all I do is just baton. <laughs> Professional baton. You might not catch those references. You might not have any idea. Maybe you have a, an, an enormous amount of respect for the DBK guys, but you might not realize that a lot of the references in some of their uploads, it's so funny how often they do it. They refer- They were clearly Dragon Ball Z fans growing up, which is absolutely something that many people from various corners of this hobby would would label. That, that's a nerdy thing to like, right? So for in a lot of people's minds, it isn't possible to be a certain type of person, right, and enjoy certain types of things. We we still view, it's so funny to me how many people view the world the same way that a lot of, like, you know, production companies, like, when they, you know, they made, like, 90s teen movies where they got, like, they get the gothic kids and they get the jocks and they got the nerds and they got the band, like, it's so funny going back to those movies and seeing how utterly stupid this viewpoint was. Very rarely, I mean, like, did different groups exist? Like, I mean, just looking back to, I went to high school uh, in the mid-2000s, right? Early to mid-2000s. Do these different groups exist? Yes. Are there hybridizations of people? Oh my God, yes. It, I, I, I literally have never met somebody who was, was just absolutely perfectly fit into one specific social role. Every single time, the more you get to know somebody, you realize whether they are outward about it or not, 
They have hobbies that are sort of hybridizations. They have interests that are hybridizations. They don't fit specifically within a mold. So people who use words like jock or nerd, just what it means is I'm very comfortable in my overly simplified little bubble where I view the world as whatever, and then I define myself as the opposite of whatever I don't like, right? We still have, we have some friends who like would define um, themselves as nerds and like, you know, uh, I guess like the more like common, you know, popular society as something else, right? And they, they use that term as like a, it's almost like a, a safety term for themselves. Like they enjoy being that. And they, they, they consider them, themselves as authentic nerd and then everybody else is not. And it's just, it's like a point of safety, but it's oversimplification, right? In reality, everybody is much more diverse. It's very rare that people are just like basic nothing. It, it occurs, but not, not as often as, as people like to assume, right? We, we assume this stuff because it makes us feel comfortable about who we have decided to be. But, Something as simple as collecting pocket knives shatters this. These preconceived notions of who people are. Uh, we will all come together together to enjoy pocket knives for almost exactly the same reasons, right? And that reason is shiny, shiny, sharp, make click noise. Oh, look, look cool. Is color I like? Is finish I like? It's literally that primitive. You can make it as complicated as you want, but it's all for the same simple primitive reason. Because like we like knife. Because yeah, ugh, it's almost a caveman like desire to just enjoy a simple tool. All it does is fold up, or in some cases it doesn't fold, it just like sits on your it's a fixed blade, right? It's it's literally just a thing you hold onto that has a sharp blade at the end that can divide things. It can take physical matter and divide it as long as that matter is generally speaking softer than whatever the blade is made out of right or it can chop it it can you you can use it to mold physical objects to the shape that you need them to be in order to progress whatever it is that you're doing right we all enjoy that and and also how cool it looks while it's doing that right <laughs> we all enjoy we enjoy this stuff for the same reason I mean, we literally have. Uh, I can't tell you how. I can't tell you how many people. I'm. I'm. I'm, just, I'm literally just like creating this whole like. There's the jocks and the nerds, and they can come together and like the knives because that. We also have um, like countless musicians. I can't tell you how many people I have met who are musicians who are like, yeah, my uh, my hobbies include, um, you know, uh, I, I play a bunch of different instruments and I like pocket knives. I'm like, that's it. You wouldn't expect those two things to go together, but they do. And it's so fun being able to converse. I, I can't tell you how many people I've talked with who um, enjoy the same type of music as me or slightly different types of music than me uh, who also like pocket knives and have introduced me to different things. So here recently I had, uh, you know, somebody introduced me to Dungeon Synth, which I thought was really cool, right? Um, and, you know, you, you could say like, oh, so I'm the nerdy side. Well, if you, if you find yourself saying that, then you're missing the point of this, right? Because you're... Um, you're, you're oversimplifying and creating these little, you know, little compartments that help you understand the world in an incredibly simple way. And it's just not how things work. We also have, um, a, a, a couple, a couple of cases where we have actual celebrities, um, who are very much into pocket knives. I know that any of you who are on, uh, the Instagram scene a lot, you probably know that Sean Ashmore is a huge, uh, pocket knife guy. Uh, and if you don't know who that is, if you remember the first X-Men movie, he's the Iceman. He's the kid with the ice powers. Uh, Sean Ashmore is a gigantic pocket knife fan and will regularly interact with people on, I mean, he follows a lot of the same people that we all follow and will regularly leave comments. Um, the guy is like super into pocket knives and you just wouldn't, I mean, like we, we kind of take celebrities and we put them, we, we forget that they're human beings. Uh, with like normal interests, like we put them on like a totally different plane of existence. And so that in and of itself is like a surprising thing for a lot of people. But yeah, people with all sorts of different interests, people that when you look at them, right, or when you see what they're interested in, sort of if we frame them up, we start to do that thing that we all do. The stupid thing that we do is dumb little human beings. We go, oh yeah, I can see what this guy's all about, right? 
So this guy's like, what, he's into cycling? Yeah, he's into cycling. I bet he's also, a, and you just sort of fill in the gaps because you, you judge people based on what you assume their interests are, what type of person you you know they are, right? A lot of people like to boil it down to politics, which I think is absolutely, I mean, like that that's that's uh, the best way to, <laughs> to, uh, to, to just have everything crumble down around you is to judge somebody based on, you know, this or that opinion on whatever, right, whatever event. Um, I, I think that's the worst. Uh, I, I mean, like, I think what we should focus on is stuff like this, our common interests. People, human beings will always disagree. And for some, uh, on certain things, that's for sure. For some reason, we it's in our nature to jam our own thoughts and opinions down other people's throats. I'm literally doing it right now. This entire channel, you could say, is just me jamming my opinion down everyone's throat, Right. Um, but what people forget to do when they give their opinion is leave room for another opinion. Remember that you are a human being and no matter how firmly you believe one thing, there are always events that can occur that can uproot your thought process. I think it's um, really irresponsible and insanely stupid to automatically assume that your mind can never be changed from one thing to another. I think that that is uh, evidence of poor evolution. <laughs> <laughs> I think absolutely every day, I think when I get up and I walk out of my house, I think I might experience something that could totally turn my world upside down today. I have no idea because, again, I'm just a dumb little human being on this gigantic earth, which is just a stupid little grain of sand going around a little light bulb in a solar a light bulb in a solar system that's part of this gigantic universe, right? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm blowing this up way bigger than it needs to be. But my point is, is that... We have all of these silly preconceived notions about people and about things and about everything. And they're just constantly broken. Sometimes by things as simple as people, these different types of people, you wouldn't expect all enjoying something similar. What could that possibly be? What could this group possibly uh, enjoy that's the same as this other group? There's absolutely no way. These are two different, different types of people. They enjoy completely different things. Sometimes something as simple as pocket knives will bring these people together, right? And then all of a sudden you're like, yeah, you know, you know, I used to think this about this type of person, or I used to feel like this about these types of people, but you're not so bad. Like you're the exception. That's what we, that's what we tell ourselves. As soon as you meet somebody who's cool from a group of people or, or type of people that you didn't think you would like, right? You meet somebody who you do like and you go, oh, this person's clearly the exception because everybody else, I, I've obviously accurately judged everybody else. So just this one's cool. No, it turns out it's just you having been stupid this whole time. And, and the reason that I, I say this, I act like I'm preaching is because I have actually done this. All of us have. Well, you step back and you look at different groups of people and you think, I don't they, I got nothing in common with them. I don't want to hear a single word out of their dumb face holes because there's no way that I, I have accurately judged them. There's absolutely no way that we could find common ground, so I'm not even going to hear it, right? I do that. And then you meet one, and then you realize, oh, they're a human being with thoughts and emotions, and they they have, you know, <laughs> they, they're they saying things that in a way that, they're, they're saying things that I didn't think they would say in a way that I didn't think that they would say them, and I'm actually kind of enjoying this this person's company, right? That happens all the time. Like, we get proven wrong all the time about other people, and for some reason, we still like to fall back on this idea that we are still correct about different types or different groups of people, and it's so silly. It's absolutely ridiculous, right? We all enjoy, this was, I mean, a lot of people are starting to think, is this more about pocket knives, or is this more about, like, general human interaction? I don't know, kind of both, right? If you do a knife guy episode, you kind of have to at least loosely base it on pocket knives, but... Again, the same can be said about a lot of enthusiast hobbies. It's funny how many different types of people can be brought together just enjoying some silly thing, right? Pocket knives. <sighs> We're all different. Yeah, there's no way. I mean, when, when you say, a funny thing is, is that when you think of a knife guy, right? What do you think of? It's hard to say, right? It's, it's that that's the one thing that makes me feel like maybe knife people are a little bit different because we're not really any one specific type of person. It's really hard to like put your finger on what a knife guy looks like. Guy or gal, whatever. Knife person, right? It's just the name of the series. Hard to put your finger on it because if you've ever, I mean, I, I've never been to Blade Show, but I've watched, you know, coverage of it. Because everybody's different. Like literally every every single person is just looks different, right? They look and act and sound different, come from different backgrounds, right? Um, 
a lot of them, you know, it's, it's always amazing to see other people who come from a, a totally different background who have exactly the same taste as me. And I think I would never have guessed that based on your appearance and the way that you talk, right, or whatever, which is just such a stupid thing to do. But we do it. That's It's in our nature, right? We judge. We're like, you sound different and you look different. So I couldn't pop. I, that's all the information I need, right? <laughs> no. Uh, no. Nah, it's 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 amazing to me that this the 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 knife world has exploded and just brought more of this into reality right as every day passes what i'm observing here is more and more and more true uh and likely if you have interacted with me or anybody down in the comment section or um integrated yourself into the community uh, you know via various um you know uh whether it's Blade Forums or Reddit or Instagram or Facebook, right? Wherever it is that you fit in, you have probably met somebody uh, who you, you didn't expect to see eye to eye with. And that's a good thing. It's a healthy thing. So that's it. That's, uh, I don't know that I need to drag this topic out anymore. Um, but tell me what you think. Leave your comments down. I know you will anyway, right? Whether I want you to or not. Leave your comments down below. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.